we've made two instances of our alpha channeled uh, QuickTime movie rendered as an AVI, and we want to make some changes to the comp that generated that QuickTime because we would like the letters to type directly across screen, sort of gunshotting, bang, 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 across the screen as opposed to typing out and staying on. So let's go back to that original comp. Uh, a good way to find that comp might be to go to the render queue. This is a little trick. And we know that we rendered shapeshifters group out of this render queue, but we also can find that comp by double-clicking on the comp name that rendered it. Now that we've got the comp of interest open, we're going to make a duplicate of it and change our work just a little bit. So let's go to the comps folder and we're looking for shapeshifters group. So let's click on it. Uh, controller command D will make shapeshifters group. Uh, let's call it shapeshifters group on off because we're going to animate these letters on and off. Double click on that so we're working in that comp. Let's close the other one so we don't make mistakes. So we're working in shapeshifters group on off. And let's tilde open this comp so we can see it more easily. Uh, we've already done this animation to it where it types on and stays on, so let's do it where it types off. The best way to do that is to sequence layers again. Let's hit the U key and just see where all of our existing keyframes are in place. I'm going to now move to the end point of the top one by hitting the I key. I think it might actually be a little better. We're going to go to the end point of the bottom one. So I'm going to click on uh, the bottom letter S, hit the letter I, control A for all, hit the left bracket key and line them all up and then we're going to make them uh, pretty short in duration. Let's make them exactly one frame long and the easiest way to do that is now that we're parked on the in frame is do alt end bracket and that'll make them all one frame long. Shift click them starting at the bottom, click on the letter S, shift click on the upper S, Animation, keyframe assistant, sequence layers. We're getting familiar with this one now. Uncheck overlap so that they line up straight across. Tilde this window to a reduced size. And then uh, let's do a ramp preview and we'll watch them type across. That's exactly the effect we're going for. You saw it just shoots across. Let's just step through it one frame at a time and we'll see where each of those letters lands in the frame to make sure we're safe. Uh, something to take notice of is you see that the the S, that S there is uh, outside of title safe. And that's because in, in the dimensions of this comp size, it is outside of title safe. But since we're using this comp in another comp, uh, we'll be sure to place it in an area w where it is in title safe in our main comp. So really keep in mind that the title safe is for the comp that you're going to be doing your final work in. I'm not a big fan of the font that we have for letter the letter P because it's the same as the font for the E that immediately follows it. So I'm just going to uh, roll down here to the the letter P layer. I'm just going to grab the keyframes for the, the P layer and I'm going to move them till I'm uh, so I have a more interesting font that's as different from the E that follows it as possible. That, that's a nice fat font for the letter P. I like that better. I'm going to do the same thing for the S because why not? I'm marqueeing around these fonts till I find one I like. I'm going to move to the endpoint for the S frame by hitting the letter I, and then just going to go through these until I have a good one. That's a nice one. So uh, let's let's go ahead and put this sort of this animating on-off font changing version of the Shape Shifters logo in our animation into our master comp. Uh, we, there's lots of ways to do that. Let's do it by dragging it onto the master comp name. And uh, let's close it for right now. And it looks like where I, I have it placed, it's such a short comp that it's going to be, it's important to line up the right part of it, the beginning. And that's our first frame, which is the S. And let's Alt left bracket to mark the endpoint for that layer and I think what would be great is if we sort of if we use this as an element that can chase in front of the one that's about to animate on so I'm clicking and dragging it to ha to start animating before the other one begins um, I've overdone it a little bit so I'm gonna move it in time back several frames by alt page down so I march that layer back in space S H 
A. So I think it would be good if it was just a little bit ahead. So I think I'm going to nudge it in space as well a little bit to the right. So let's take a look at how that plays out. Set a new end frame for our animation, maybe a little bit later, so we can see the whole shape shifters, and, and then do a ramp preview. That's, that's the kind of effect we're looking for, something to zip across ahead. Trailblaze for the shape shifters. And while I think that's working, I think uh, we're, let's, let's apply the principle of foreground and background to this now. We'll put shapeshifters group on off. Let's make a clone of it. Let's make a bigger one by scaling it up. And let's move it a little bit north in the frame. Hit P and decrease the Y value, moving it higher in frame. And let's mimic the effect of the way these things behave when shot by a real camera. Of If we had our focal distance set so that shapeshifters, our featured element, was in focus, a foreground element would be thrown out of focus. Uh, fast blur is another good thing to use here, so that's what we're going to use, fast blur. So we've applied fast blur to our top shapeshifters group on off, and why don't we give that a, a layer name because you're getting an awful lot of these. We'll call this uh, shapeshifters group foreground for FG1. That way we won't get lost, and the foreground element number one is on top. We'll set a blur value of, let's say, 10. See how that looks? I think I overdid, overdid it there a bit. We'll put it back to 5. And just because blurs are one of those things that are best viewed at full res, let's uh, let's actually get to that another way. Um, control J will set your comp to full res. Shift Control J is half. Shift Control Alt J is quarter. But for now, Control J. You really can see how the blurs render differently and the whole lighting interaction changes when you're looking at a reduced resolution. That's why it's important to control J, be at full res here. That's a good defocus as far as I'm concerned. Let's let's add another one of these though. So shapeshifters FG, now duplicate it, it auto renames itself to FG2. Let's move it south in the frame. Let's move it left in time by doing alt page up. So it's a little bit ahead of the other one. And let's scale it up so that we have yet another, I think even more than that. Let's make it 300, let's say. So we have altered relationships between all of these things. And presumably, if it's closer to camera because it is larger, its focus should be slightly different too. So let's increase the blurriness to 8. And let's look at that as it plays back. I think that's working pretty well. So now we have these foreground elements, we have our background element that's typing in, and we have a middle ground element. Let's add one more. Let's add one more piece to this puzzle so it sort of gives a special sauce.